Hi, this is Doug from Stud Mag Loaders. Today I want to talk to you about a product that uh, I developed about uh, six months ago, um, maybe a year ago. Um, we didn't push it really hard because we didn't know how it was going to be uh, received by the customers because some people thought it was just insane. But what it is, it's our 40 round magazine designed to fit the uh, FX Dreamline Maverick uh, line of rifles, also known as the Mega Magazine, and you're familiar with it like this. Um, there's a big announcement today. Um, many of you have bought these all over the world uh, and they've been using them for shooting pellets. Uh, they're also, the standard product is also able to shoot, you know, the smaller slugs. These are uh, 22 grain. Um, this, mag this standard uh, pellet magazine will also feed these. But the big announcement today is we have developed uh, a magazine that can accept these new 40 grain slugs from Javelin and from Zan projectiles. These are these big monster 40 grain beast things that will not fit in the standard uh, FX magazine. I should say they'll fit, but they won't cycle. Um, let me uh, show you essentially why we developed this dedicated slug only magazine for this product line. Uh, we'll take Standard FX magazine. This has got 40, uh, this has got, well, I don't know, 18, uh, 18 slugs in it. And these happen to be the uh, Patriot slugs. And um, if you notice, as soon as I try to cycle this, immediately, no rotation. If I take the lid off, it cycles fine. In contrast, the stud 40 round magazine dedicated to slugs handles it this way. And as you see, we have a shot indicator showing uh, we have, uh, what we have, 20 pellets left, 20 slugs left cycles them perfectly every single time without any issue whatsoever. Um, this, this product has some really cool features that I want to talk to you about before we get too far into this. And the first thing is, we all know these magazines, um, they have this, this thing that rotates here. And uh, I remember when I first bought my 177 Dreamline, I was uh, firing some pellets in the backyard and I'd fire away and all of a sudden, I, Nothing happened. Nothing would feed. And I would take this thing out and take the lid off and all of a sudden this thing would snap forward. And then I realized that I needed to make an adjustment to the spring. Well, if you want to make an adjustment to the spring of this thing, what you need to do is unscrew this in the front and there's two little springs in here with two little ball bearings. And if you are not really careful, those things are going to disappear. And then your magazine is going to be basically useless. So I want to show you how we adjust the tension on this product. All we do is take the chain and we lift it off like this. And now this back wheel can spin free. Um, there's a chain, I'm gonna to talk to you about the chain in a minute. So the way you adjust the tension on here, we typically preload these with three rotations. And what that basically means is we get it like that where that thing is just kind of getting ready to engage and we give it one, two, three. And then we take this and put it back on here. Now, say for instance, uh, there's a slug that's even heavier and it won't feed it. Lift the chain off again, and we're gonna give it one, two, three and a half. Now we've just increased that tension considerably. Another thing that happens with this product that people generally aren't aware of is the way the spring works. And by the way, we wind our own springs, which you see right here. I wind every single one of these springs in a spring winder that I have. Um, these springs are custom designed, uh, stainless steel with a predetermined wire diameter and wound around a predetermined mantle that through studying the best uh, tension and strength, to get the desired effect that we want with dead reliability and no uh, deterioration of the spring pressure over time. 
is we've put slugs in here. Say we load this one, let me get another one, it's all loaded up. So here's another one that's fully loaded up with slugs. As I push the first slug through, I release tension on the spring, and progressively, as I take more and more of these out of here, what, the way this is designed, as the spring unwinds, the pressure on the, on the uh, slugs advancing becomes less. So as you advance through these, what you notice is this doesn't act any different from the first slug you shoot to the last slug you shoot, and that is not an accident. The other thing that's kind of cool about this is um, I never liked this thing. I just found this, this rotating thing very annoying. Um, sometimes it's hard to turn. And what we did with our product is I designed it with a special magnet. And the way it works is it says, it just as it says lift, you lift this off. And the way it works is this is engaged. There's a teeny undercut in the front of this thing and there's a, a corresponding undercut in the, in the lid. So the way this works is you actually drop it in here, this way first, drop it in, snap it in, and that magnet picks it up. And I should have done this before. I guess you'll have to trust me. When this is full, these things will not drop. So you won't have this thing popping out in your range bag and surprising you with uh, slugs laying all over the place. Another thing that you've all seen um, with these magazines is sometimes, the, depending on what caliber these are, FX will put O-rings inside of here. And um, the O-rings seem to last, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 times in, in and out of the breech of the gun, and the O-rings uh, disappear. The reason these O-rings are here is we've done a study on the, on the guns that I've had access to, and I found out that the breeches are different widths by checking them with gauge blocks. And I don't remember what the number is, but let's just say it's five thousandths of an inch. And what that basically means is when you install this magazine in there, um, some of the magazines will be tight and some of the magazines will be loose. And what happens sometimes is you're shooting along and you're cycling and all of a sudden, if it's a loose one, this thing will work out and you go to advance the next pellet and that lever will jam. The reason it jams is because this thing has moved and, and the center of the barrel is no longer in line with the center of the pellet of the, of, the, of the slug of the magazine. And now it binds. We've solved that. And we put, and you can see these better with this camera, and I'll show you to you with this one also. We have two, ring, two o rings that are on here. And these o rings are not glued in. And they also don't fall out. And you go, Doug, how, how did you do that? Because of the additive manufacturing that we use, and these are not injection molding, we can actually produce undercuts in products very easily as we engineer them. And the way this works is, you know, O-rings are round, picture just a cylinder like this. And what we do is we go about 20% past the center line of the O-ring, and what we do is we create a female feature in the lid shaped just like this. So as the O-rings go in, we shove them around a little bit, and they actually spring into the uh, undercut pocket, and as a result, they don't fall out. Uh, so you don't have to worry about this magazine over time moving when you're shooting it or having these O-rings fall out, which is incredibly annoying. Another thing that um, we found out with the standard magazines, they're plastic on plastic, and what that basically means is the rotary section in the center that you see from this camera spinning around spins on, there's no, there's no bearing surfaces in here other than plastic on plastic. And my guess is these parts are both made out of acetal. Uh, acetal is a pretty good uh, plastic to use for uh, natural lubricants. But when you're trying to run, when you're trying to push slugs through here, what you find is they need to design clearance in this thing. If you notice, as I'm moving this thing around, this thing is rocking all over the place and I can move it a little bit up and down, left and right. In contrast to our design, there is no movement whatsoever in anything. And the reason that's like that is because we use roller bearings. So inside of the drive wheel and the idler wheel, and I'll turn these upside down just so you can see how it works, we actually use automotive grade uh, bearings that have zero clearance in them. 
These things, if you take this product and you take this chain off and you put a dial indicator and you rotate this thing, the total run out will be less than one thousandth of an inch in both of these. And what that allows you to do is we're looking for jam-free operation. We want these slugs to start at one end, to feed all the way through here, and we want this thing to feed perfectly. And the only way you can do that if the conditions are exactly the same. This product, the conditions are not the same. As uh, the slug slowly, slugs or pellets slowly empty out of here, it favors one side or the other, and, and strange things happen. Strange things don't happen with this product. Um, the distance, from the center line of any one of these links to the edge of the case, total condition is less than one thousandth of an inch, which is really within the accuracy of how they're manufacturing the slugs and the pellets. So it tracks absolutely beautifully and you just don't struggle with things binding up. Um, the, the, basically the word we get from customers in the field is this magazine is really, really smooth. And let's just take a look at the weight of these things. So we'll take our little scale here, turn this thing on. Um, FX magazine, 23 grams. Our magazine without the lid on, 82. So it's uh, almost four times heavier. That's because there's stainless steel inside this thing and big heavy springs. The reason it's manufactured this way is I didn't have room to put the spring underneath the wheel I'd really like to drive. The way you really want to do this is you want this wheel to drive and you want it to drive the slug into the stop. I didn't have room to, to put this in and a bearing. So what I needed to do is I needed to put the spring and the bearing inside the, uh, the other wheel. And what that basically does is when I put tension on this chain, and I'll do it the way this is doing it. And you, you can barely see it, but if I put a lot of tension on this thing, I have no movement here and it's loose on this side. And guess what happens when that, if you put enough tension on this thing, is this thing doesn't feed properly. And when this gets loose on one side, these, these will start to jam in this area right here. But if you notice, now I just took it off and look at, tight on this side, tight on this side. How do we do that? Well, when you have a bicycle, you adjust the chain tension by loosening the two, the two uh, nuts and you pull it back and you get the chain nice and tight and tighten the bolts and away you go. This thing's got fixed center lines in it. You know, when I, when I produce these cases, you know, we produce these center lines of the cases within one thousandth of an inch and we produce a chain. And it has to go on there one time, it has to fit absolutely perfect. How do we do that? If you do the math, if we vary the, the pin diameter inside of one of these links by half a thousandth of an inch, you multiply it times 41 links, 40 plus this stop link, you've now, the chain grows 20 thousandths of an inch. 20 thousandths of an inch, this is just totally floppy, totally floppy, and it will not work. And what I can actually do is I can change the process that I set the machines at, and I can produce a chain and uh, get a chain that's loose, make another adjustment, I can get the chain tighter. And finally, when I lock that process in, I can pretend, produce chain after chain after chain after chain with no deviations in them. They are all accurate. Every single one of those things comes off the machine and I can drop them right into a magazine. But the other thing goes, plastic chain. You know, I get the die cast chain, but how strong could these be? Well, let me show you a little, let me show you something. I'm going to take this chain off the one I've just been using as a demo. And I just happen to have 25 pound weight here. I'm going to take this, uh, take this chain. I'm going to put it on here. And one, two, three. Do you think that chain is going to break with your 40 grain slugs? No. Um, and I don't want to tell you how much money it cost me and how many months it took to produce a chain that can do that. And by the way, it can handle a lot more than 25 pounds. But that's all I could lift today. But uh, these things work just fantastic. Um, I'm real proud of the fact that now you can buy them pellet only or slug only. 
And uh, trust me, these things are going to work. If you have any problems, uh, which you won't, you can contact me and they are going to be taken care of promptly. Again, Doug from Stud Mag Loaders, thank you for your business. We appreciate you guys very much. And you, have a, and you all have a great day. Thank you.